Okay, we're gonna look at page 61 of your handbook. And this is all about two new functions. Well, you saw that when we were doing our um, UCLA Palms activities, but we have an exponential function and we're gonna look at its inverse. So anytime we're not totally sure about what a function looks like, we're gonna make a table. So we're gonna plug in some values. If I plug in um, some numbers like a one, maybe a zero, a negative one, maybe a few more, like a positive two, negative two. So when I plug a one in, we're looking at three to the first power, that's equal to three. Then we plug a zero in, that's three to the zero, that will be a one. Three to the negative one, that's one third. Now, if you're not so sure about the zero and negative exponents, let's take a look over here for just a minute. We're gonna slide this out and think about why those exponents work the way they do, just in case you're not sure. Um, there's a few different ways. One of them is just by using exponent rules. So if you remember, if you have something like three to the fourth power over three to the fourth, the exponent rule says that we're gonna subtract our exponents. So this will be three to the four minus four, which is equal to three to the zero. But at the same time, we know that three to the fourth over three to the fourth will turn into one. We also have, if you have like three to the fourth power over three to the third power, again, we have the exponent rule says four minus three. If you're not even sure about that one, if we write out what three to the fourth really means and we write out what three to the third really means, these can reduce to become a one, those reduce to become a one, those reduce to become a one, so we're left with one three, which is the same as if you took four minus three. That's why the subtraction works out. So you have three to the first power. Now, if you take it the other way, if we had three to the third over three to the fourth, you can see that we would have the three threes on top and the four threes in the denominator. And so as we start to reduce these, because we have all these ones, we end up with the three living in the bottom, so that's one third. And if you think about the exponent rules, that would be three to the three minus four, which will be equal to three to the negative one power. So you can see three to the negative one is one third, three to the zero is equal to one. So then we're going to continue on with our table. 3 to the 2 power would be 9. 3 to the negative 2 power is like dividing by 2 of those 3s. So that's why it becomes 1 9. So there's some more room on that table, but let's try and plot it since we've kind of seen this function before. Um, just to notice that it's counting by half. So this would be a 1, 2, there's 3, 1, 3. Let's put a few more numbers on here. All right, so when we sketch our graph, at 1, we're going to be up at 3. At 0, we're up at 1. At negative 1, oops, I should have labeled in the negative way as well. At negative 1, we're going to be at 1 third. So it's a little bit less than a half. At 2, we're going to be all the way up at 9. So we're like off the chart. Negative 2, uh, we're at 1 9, so a little bit smaller. So if we connect these together, we can kind of get an idea of what's going on. As you plug in larger and larger x values, it's going to shoot higher and higher up. When you plug in smaller and smaller x values, those are negative exponents. They just turn me into little tiny fractions. And then we get closer and closer and closer to the back but never touch it. So if we continue on here, it asks for the domain of our function. That's going to go from negative infinity to infinity because we can plug in any values we want for our exponents. But then we start thinking about the range of our function. Our y values, those are our outputs from plugging into an exponential function. They will never go negative. In fact, we end up having a horizontal asymptote on the x-axis that will never touch, but we'll get closer and closer to. So our range then will be zero with a parenthesis to infinity. And so we look at this as x approaches negative infinity. So as our x's are going that way to negative infinity, our graph is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Our y values are approaching zero. 
And as our x values um, approach positive infinity, so as they get bigger and bigger and bigger, going to positive infinity, you can see that they're just growing and growing and growing. So they're going to go up to infinity. Of this one wants us to determine if the function is increasing or decreasing since it's going to be going up, 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 as our x's get bigger, our y's get bigger, we say that it is increasing. And then the last part is it one to one? Yes, because it passes the horizontal line test. Erase that. We're actually, before we get to the next one on this page, we're gonna switch on over to the back page and we're gonna recall, cause it was so long ago, we're gonna recall what three to the X looks like. So I'm gonna do a little sketch of three to the X one more time. Remember we plugged in a zero, we were up at one. When we plugged in a one, we were up at three and then it kind of looks like this guy just trying to remind us here. So our little table from the front, do it really rough here, but one got us three, zero got us one, and negative one got us one third. So this is three to the x. So if we're interested in an inverse, remember the inverse um, is the kind of undoing that function. And so if we're be undoing that function, we're gonna have opposite, or not opposite, but interchanging of our x and our y's. So in our table, instead of the one, three, we're gonna plug a three in and get one. Instead of zero, one, we'll be at one, zero. And at negative one, we get one third. Now we're gonna plug in a one third and get negative one. So this function is going to do the reverse of our exponential function. It's basically telling us an answer to an exponential expression and giving us the exponent. Compared to our exponential equation, it gives us an exponent to plug in and it outputs the answer to that exponent. So we're undoing that. We actually have a notation for that and it involves the logarithm. So we're going to write L-O-G, that's for logarithm. We're going to write a little 3 down below, that's our base of 3. And so this is the inverse of our exponential function. And it looks kind of weird, and some people don't really like that log notation, but really all it's doing is saying, what's the exponent? So if we see log base 3 of 3, like our first input here, this says 3 to what power, that's what we're trying to figure out, will get us a 3. And so that would have to be 1. So we write log base 3 of 3 is equal to 1. Uh, let's try that again. Looking at our second row of our table, log base 3, because that's our base this whole time, of 1. This is saying 3 to some power, that's what we're trying to figure out, 3 to some power gets us a 1. Well, that would have to be 0. So we say log base 3 of 1 equals 0. So let's sketch this so we can see that it's the inverse. I'm going to plot the points that we just found. 3 is up at 1. 1 is at 0. And at 1 third we're at negative 1. And this time we're going to get closer and closer and closer to the y-axis but not touch it. So this time our range, if we kind of scroll back over here, our range is going to be from negative infinity to infinity because our outputs here are those exponents from the previous page, which we could plug in any numbers. Now our x values um, will never ever be negative because our x values are those answers from the exponents, which were always positive numbers. Remember, if we plug in a negative exponent, it just gave us a smaller fraction number. And so our x value will never be negative. So we have that the domain of this function 
will be from zero all the way to infinity. And this relates to the domain and range of F inverse, or sorry, the domain and range of F inverse with the domain and range of X is they're interchanged. And that should make sense because if you're gonna switch all your X and Y's then the domain and range would also be interchanged. So again, that since all the X, Y, and Y's interchange. So just to finish filling this page in, the inverse, F inverse of X is called a logarithmic function. And the equation of the inverse that you saw already was going to be log base 3 of X. So we need to remember that the log is what undoes the exponential function. So just like when you think about what undoes squaring, you think of square root, or if you're multiplying, what undoes multiplying? Well, that's dividing. Or if you have a cube root, what undoes that? Uh, well, cubing. When I ask you what undoes an exponential function, we would say the log test. Or what undoes the log the exponential function. So they undo each other, they are inverses. These are all the inverse relationships that we're gonna see. Okay, we're gonna go back to the previous page. And the reason I skipped it was it's still an exponential function, but because it has um, a base that's a fraction, there's another way that we could think about this, that this is like two to the negative one, because that's one half to the x, or two to the negative x. So we could see it as our two to the x function with a reflection over the y-axis. So if you think about what that would look like, our regular exponential function, two to the x, would look, well, zero, one is always on there. Remember, any function that you have that says a to the x, y equals a to the x, if we plug in a zero, that will always be a one. So we know that zero, one is always going to be on our exponential functions which actually also tells us that the point one zero will always be on our log function since it's the inverse of that. So going back over here, if we look at something like our exponential function, two to the x would look like that. So kind of previewing it, that if we're gonna reflect over the y-axis, like we talked about with all our other functions before, then we're going to kind of go the reverse way here. Not exactly reverse, because not the inverse, but it's just a reflection point-wise over the y-axis. So all our x's will change sign. So we're going to ignore that for just a minute and just do it point-wise, so we don't have to think about that. And so point-wise means we'll plug in those same values, like the 1, a 0, and a negative 1. And I'm also going to erase the graphs that we had for a minute. Okay. And so when I plug in a 1 to this, we're going to have 1 half to the first power, but that's just gonna get us back to one half. When I plug in a zero, one half to the zero, that's just one. And I have one half to the negative one, that's gonna just divide by a half, which really flips it over to make two. So now, when I'm at, let's put a few more numbers in here. When I'm at one, I'm only halfway up now, which will put me here. At zero, I'm at one. That's my regular point we just talked about. And then negative one, two. And so you can see we're gonna get that graph. That's really the reflection of what we saw up above. Oops, up above. So now our domain is still gonna be negative infinity to infinity and our y values will still never be negative for our exponential functions because there's no way that these outputs can be negative. Negative exponents are only giving us their reciprocals. So that means that our range is gonna be from zero to infinity. And will our x's, what will happen as our x's approach negative infinity? Well, as our x's go this way, our y values are going up to infinity. 
And as our x's go to positive infinity, our y values are getting closer and closer to zero. And we have a horizontal asymptote there at y equals zero. And the last part, function is increasing or decreasing? No, this time's decreasing. So when we have that exponential function, if a is a whole number like bigger than one, then it's always gonna be the increasing like three to the x or two to the x. But if we have that our a is less than one, bigger than zero, kind of ignoring if there was a negative here or not, um, we're gonna be decreasing. Um, and then last part, is it one to one? Yes, and it's because it passes the horizontal line test. Every y value has exactly one x.